what's your relationship with the state as a school? So in Australia, all of the schools are funded by the federal government. So that's mm. the national, and that's yep. where we get the bulk of our money is from the federal government. There's a little bit from the state. Um, we all have to be accredited and that is managed through the state mainly through the non-state schools accreditation board. It's different from state to state what requirements you have. Oh, okay. In Queensland, we have very, in all states, there's very strong requirements for what you need to be able to provide and show as evidence of what you're doing and evidence of growth. However, there's a really important mindset work to be done in this for schools. And that's something I try and in my other little side work, I try and help teachers and schools to kind of work on that mindset work and and curriculum Mm. work, democratic education. But for working with government specifically, it's about not going into it with an antagonistic relationship, Mm. Mm -hmm. not going into it thinking, oh, they don't understand what we're doing, they want to shut us down, and, like, just coming already with negativity. It's Mm. about knowing that they not they don't necessarily understand what we're doing and it's our job to reassure them to provide evidence that what we're doing mm. is valuable to use the tools of our culture to use research to use psychology to use re- evidence based research to be innovative and to show enough evidence so that they can go that's not how I would do it but you clearly know what you're doing so you mm-hmm. just go ahead and do that thing and we'll just leave you alone <laughs> Right, right, right. So there's a little bit of extra work that other schools probably don't have to do if you're doing mm-hmm. anything innovative in Australia. You know, right, you really right. okay. you really have to do that extra work and that can feel frustrating. You can feel like, oh, mm. everyone else just gets to provide really rubbish curriculum and doesn't have to do all these extra bits of paperwork proving that their mm. excellent curriculum is, is working. We can get mad about it or we can just go, hey, we do that. We do that work and we get to do what we do and we get to fund, we get funding for to do that work and therefore right, we right. can be more accessible to more families who wouldn't be able to pay. Right. Humanitas, for example, runs sliding scale fee school. Mm. I think we're probably very, very, very unique in that in Australia. I don't know of any others. There may be some other schools that do sliding scale fees. Mm. Pine is very low fee paying with a lot of families who also do in-kind fees so they might do other th- other jobs you know mm-hmm. rather than pay fees so both of those communities and that is probably quite different to a lot of the democratic schools in australia who may be more medium to higher fee paying schools mm-hmm. um, we aren't either of my spaces aren't in those right places yeah nice nice um so, so, so we, that, do, yeah. we rely on that money from the government yeah yeah to keep our, yeah. to keep our beautiful teachers paid yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, and it's, it's it's interesting because it's such a different you know setup than than yeah. what we do here in the states. I mean, we don't have charter schools in Australia, right. so we don't have anything other than the state schools. And then if you if you are different to a state school, and in particularly in Queensland, like Patrick, my partner who is the principal at Humanitas, he would love to have done this work in a state school, mm. but there's just no avenue. You can't even use Google in a state school because they're like, no, we don't, right, we don't right. allow. Like, there's, it's very tight what you can and can't do. So if you want to do something different, you have to move into the independent sector, the private sector, mm. and most of the schools in the independent sector are not offering anything that's particularly different. There are lots. There are a few right. little niches of different, but there's a lot of like religious schools and. Right. Yeah, it's not. And and that's quite frankly how it is here is that, yeah. that you know, it, it's extremely rare to find a state school that's doing something different. There are a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and they're, you know, not, they're very few and far between. Yeah. And then you have some charters that are trying to do some interesting things. Yeah. But even in the charter sector, it's not a common thing. Okay. It's still, charters are not inherently creative schools in any way any way shape or huh. form they they run the gamut of of from very traditional very teacher centric you know mm-hmm. curriculum based kind of stuff all the way to some some relatively democratic montessori type of things mm-hmm. but but that's also a tricky thing because then like you say you know you have this if you have a charter then you have to manage your relationship with the chartering organization yeah. just like you're managing with your state yeah and they're not going to inherently understand so you have to you know manage your relationship with these people and and help them understand why this is good and valuable and and what works so and then then you have the private sector which is which is where for us it's a, it's a 
very wide open space because there's basically no no true oversight by the any government uh, yeah, over what goes on in a private school. Yeah. It's it basically comes down to you know fire safety and you know basic safety issues is all that they yeah. would have traction on. So in the private sector, we have complete freedom. A lot of yeah. um, wow. So it's but we don't have funding. Yeah. You know, then you're, you're then you're making the parents yeah. pay for it, which is why yeah. some people went to the charter was because then it's kind of this blending and, but yeah, so it, it's 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 interesting, and and even in the charter sector, things started out kind of wide open. You could do almost anything, but then as some people freaked out about what charters mean for the other schools, yeah. they started to box them in, and it's it's harder and harder to to do something interesting and creative doesn't mean there aren't still there are some interesting charter schools yeah. going on but but it's still you know it's this dialogue of, <laughs> between the people who freak out about things uh, anything innovative and those who actually want to do the things that are you know innovative and interesting and good for kids uh, <laughs> this is the agentic schools vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.